thank you for joining me here at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura and today I'm doing another book collection video. So this one I am sharing first edition copies that are also vintage. So a vintage book is a book that is between 50 and 100 years old. One of these books is from 1926, so it is very close to being antique, but right now it is still vintage. So anyway, let's get right to it. The first book in my vintage first edition collection is my copy of Sometimes a Great Notion by Ken Kesey. Sorry, trying to not have the glare be on here too bad. Uh, I do wish this had a more interesting cover, so I might buy other editions. I've been trying to find editions on eBay that are more interesting. I love this one because it's first edition, but the cover is very boring, honestly. But anyway, this book itself is fantastic. Highly, highly recommend. It's amazingly written, like so technical, and the characters are fantastic. And the story itself, it's kind of like this epic family saga in a way. And it's about this town that is on strike, but then there's a family that refuses to go on strike and they keep working. So the town is hating them because they're ruining the strike by continuing to work. And it's putting a strain on the family. And then there's this other brother, that returns home to help them while the strike is happening, but he's also returning home because he wants to get revenge on this other brother of his who he has always been intimidated by. And then you have the wife involved who is just, she just feels like she's not living up to her potential and it's not the life she had wanted. And so she's just doing some soul searching while all this is going on as well. But amazing book, absolutely loved it. Highly recommend. The movie has Paul Newman and Henry Fonda. You can check out my book first movie video for this one. But yeah, so this book, Ken Kesey, by the way, he wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, very famous. This one isn't quite as famous as that one. I've never read Cuckoo's Nest, but I don't think it's better. I would be surprised if I liked it better than Sometimes a Great Notion because this one is just so epic and incredible. But anyway, comment down below if uh, you have read this and Cuckoo's Nest. Let me know which one you like better. So yeah, this is 1964, not too old, not especially old, but it is considered vintage and it is a first edition. So love this book. Next up, this book is from 1926. So this is the oldest one I'll be talking about today and it is Oil by Upton Sinclair. This one, it was the inspiration for the movie There Will Be Blood by Paul Thomas Anderson. So he based the movie off like the first 100 pages of this book. From there, the book and movie are very different. The book ends up being a lot about like communism and socialism, whereas the movie isn't at all. But I absolutely love love the movie. It is so, so good. One of my all time favorite movies. The book I did enjoy, but it's definitely different. Anyway, this is a first edition copy, 1926. I do love that cover, but this does also come with the book jacket, but it is like falling apart. So it's kept inside, but that is a pretty cool book jacket cover. And yeah, considering how old this one is, it's still in pretty good shape. So I, I mean, it's still pretty fragile, but I feel like I got lucky finding this one. I don't remember how much I paid because I bought this a couple months ago now, but I'm pretty sure it was maybe like $25 or something. That's kind of a random guess, but I remember it was very, it wasn't even reasonable. It was like a deal. So Oil by Upton Sinclair. And then we have my first edition copy of Native Son from 1940. This one I have talked about a lot lately. You can check out my book first movie, which my book first movie for Oil slash There Will Be Blood. That was like one of the early episodes I did back in 2020 when I first started Why the Book Wins and it was just a podcast cast back then. And that was maybe like my fifth episode. So it was definitely an early one. So if you listen to that book first movie, I feel like you can tell that I'm newer at podcasting. But anyway, Native Son, I recently read this one. Absolutely fantastic. Highly, highly recommend. So suspenseful, difficult to read, but so hard to put down. And yeah, this is my first edition copy, which is very exciting. And this is another one I bought a while ago, a few months back, but I don't think I ever shared it. And that is a first edition copy of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. And again, this one has, as you can see, it has uh, the book jacket, which is so exciting when I find a vintage antique book that still has the jacket. And if the jacket is still in decent condition, that's so exciting. So this one is 1943. So it's actually older than my native son copy. And yet this one is in worse condition. Like it's definitely very fragile. But I read this book in like 2019 and I loved it. I want to do a book first movie for this one and give this a reread so that will happen sometime relatively soon. But yeah, it's like a 
kind of self-autobiographical to some extent about Betty Smith growing up in Brooklyn with her dad who was an alcoholic and her mom and her brothers and sisters and her aunt. Yeah, it's a great coming of age story, which I used to say I didn't like coming of age stories, but there's a number of them that I've really enjoyed. So I guess that's not true. I like coming of age stories when they're done well, I guess. Also, this one is just really interesting because I love books that take place in a different time and they were written in that time because it's just so interesting to see how things were done back then and what's changed and what stayed the same. And you find out like the origins of Halloween in this book, they used to call it ragamuffining. <laughs> and it took place, um, I think it was like around Thanksgiving where they would just like go around to the rich houses and try to get food, try to get leftovers. And then over the years that kind of became Halloween. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And so happy to have this first edition copy. And this video has been going by incredibly quick. <laughs> I'm just kind of going through these quickly. But anyway, the last one on my list is not a first edition actually, but it is vintage and it is a 1946 edition of The Red Pony by John Steinbeck. So I had heard about this book for so long, like it's a popular one to read in school, but I never read it and I was never interested in, in reading it. And I heard it was sad and I was like, oh, like the horse dies, I'm sure. Which horses, not horses, but like animals in general dying in books, I don't find particularly sad. I cried when I read Where the Red Fern Grows when I was a kid, but at some point, <laughs> I guess I stopped being bothered by that. I mean, it depends on the circumstances, but when authors use that as a way to get you to cry, cry and feel emotion like it just feels manipulative and I mean so much of writing is manipulative to some extent but anyway yeah I just kind of stopped you liking it when authors use that in their books to get you to feel something so yeah that was one reason why I was never interested in, in reading this however I read it recently absolutely loved it John Steinbeck is fantastic love his writing so much uh he has like writes such great complex characters that are so nuanced dealing with difficult emotions his stories are usually pretty heavy and dealing with darker subjects and confronting these heavy topics. Like this is a coming of age story where Jody is confronting and dealing with these adult situations and emotions for the first time in his life. And it's how he's processing it. And you also hear about his family, his mom, his dad, Billy Buck, his grandpa. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I shouldn't have taken so long to read this one. So highly recommend. And this edition is so pretty. So you have the horse on the front right there, which I kind of matched this book. Anyway, and then that beautiful page And so pretty, you have like different illustrations throughout, which I should probably be filming this holding the camera to make it better, but I've already started doing it this way. So I'll just stick with this. But here's another picture. So yeah, just beautiful illustrations in here. So I would highly recommend this book. Highly recommend John Steinbeck in general. I am on a John Steinbeck kick. <laughs> but yeah, so excited to own this edition. And this again, it's not a first edition. So it was, I think it was like $15 or something. It was cheap. So highly recommend find the, finding this one on eBay because there were a lot of them out there. It's not a rare book. It is vintage and it is beautiful. So I'm happy to own it. And that wraps it up. So <laughs> I kind of sped through those, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have read any of these books. Let me know if you collect vintage books or antique books and what is the oldest book you own. I am actually not sure what the oldest book I own is. I know I have ones from the 1800s. I don't think I have any from like the 1700s. So it'd be somewhere in the 1800s. I would have to go through and see which one is the oldest though. But anyway, so comment down below if you are a vintage antique, antique book collector and let me know the details of your vintage and antique books and which one you are the most proud to own, which one was the hardest to find, all of that good stuff. So yeah, thank you again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my other book collection videos. I'm so proud of my book collection. It has grown so much in the past year. Thanks again for watching. Bye.